Swatch is one of these brands that I just look at and think, meh. On one hand, they've got some history and the infrastructure that other fashion brands would kill for. On the other, they make some bizarre choices with many of their watches that keep them from becoming a strong recommendation of mine. And yes, before you ask, I have gone for the lockdown buzz cut. To be clear, for this video, we're focusing on the mainline Swatch Fashion Watch brand, rather than the umbrella Swatch Group, which owns a bunch of popular brands. This brand was launched in 1983 and saw tremendous success by capitalizing on the quartz crisis of the 1970s and 80s with their bright, colorful, battery-powered fashion watches. 37 years later, and they're very much still here. You've probably seen these floating around social media or in department stores at some point. I've tried a few of their watches before, including these pair, one steel model and another plastic. I'll link both below if you want to take a look at them. They've got that Swiss stamp on the dial, but are they any good? Um, kind of. A lot of their watches are only about 50 quid on Amazon, so I guess for that price, you can't expect too much. However, there are definitely a few things that frustrate me. I think if they made just a couple of alterations and stop being so lazy, I could recommend them more readily. So a big upside of these Swatch watches is they come in a massive array of different designs and colors, meaning that you're likely to find one that you like the look of. Undoubtedly, many of these are very polarizing. There are some crazy ones out there, but others are much more basic. Both of these fall into the latter category with simple, minimalist designs, and I think they look pretty good. I find that with cheaper watches, the simpler designs tend to look the best without looking too tacky or overcomplicated. Something I will credit Swatch for is their ability to come up with so many unique and creative designs. There are some homages in there, but generally they have plenty of dials that you just won't see anywhere else. Unfortunately, I think the aesthetics of many Swatch watches are ruined by the materials they're constructed of, specifically the case construction. You'll notice this green watch is translucent. You can see straight through to the movement from the rear and the strap connection from the front. That's because this, like the majority of Swatch watches, is made of plastic. In my eyes, this makes them feel toy-like. On wrist, they do feel comfortable and light, but in a cheap way, a bit like a child's watch. Unfortunately, I struggle to get past that feeling. In some specific situations, that approach may pay off. For instance, with some of their transparent jellyfish models, but for others, it's underwhelming. Obviously, they've done this because it's cheap to produce plastic in different colors like this. Nevertheless, loads of Chinese brands have showcased how easy it is to produce stainless steel cases for a substantially lower price point than this. For a brand as big as Swatch, it's disappointing that their steel models start at a notably higher price point. I understand that it's gonna be hard to directly compete with the super low cost of Chinese labor, but I think for such a big company, they should be able to at least get a bit closer. I think even Timex with their polished brass cases do a better job in this regard. If I wanted a plastic watch, I'd just go and spend way less and get a Casio instead. The stainless steel irony models, as they're called, are infinitely superior. I have to say, I do like the smooth look of this one, and though it is more expensive, it feels like a better way to spend your money on a Swatch. These cases are both sealed, but do contain a small battery compartment on the rear, so you can easily switch the battery, which I like. And that sealed design is great for quartz watches, not so much for the System 51 mechanical ones though, where those internals are basically inaccessible. I don't like the idea of that. I think it makes that mechanical watch feel a bit like a disposable mechanical watch, the movements in these are a bit 50-50 for me. These are Swiss made, which generally means you can expect higher levels of quality control compared to most low-end Chinese quartz movements that are used in many cheap fashion watches elsewhere. Also, the resale value doesn't seem to be too bad, as you can list these as having a Swiss movement inside and being Swiss made watches. As cheesy as it sounds, that does mean that you can draw in more potential buyers. On the other hand, these movements are loud. I'm talking almost Timex Weekender levels of loud. This could be partially attributed to the plastic case, but it still leaves me with the feeling that these just aren't very decent. Surely it wouldn't cost Switzerland's largest movement manufacturer a ton of money to make these a little bit quieter. When it comes to straps, uh, these vary a bit. The plastic models tend to come fitted with silicone straps like this one. These are actually of fairly good quality. 
They're nothing special, but they do have a ribbed inner to increase the level of comfort, and they wear surprisingly well on wrist. The buckle is only constructed of plastic though, which doesn't fill me with confidence. I can't comment on the leather straps as both of these unfortunately came with the silicon ones. Frustratingly, Swatch watches feature unusual lugs that require proprietary straps. In my opinion, this just seems like an anti-consumer money grab to get people to buy pricey official Swatch straps rather than reusing their existing ones. I'm unsure what their excuse is for this. Maybe the lugs on the plastic watches are more prone to breakage without that added support of these extra prongs. Maybe they just think it looks better integrated. It might be somewhat understandable on the plastic ones, but for the steel ones, I don't justify that excuse. I don't see why they would need these. You can buy third-party swatch straps, but there's just far less choice than with standard lugs. Why won't they address any of those issues? Because the profit margins are probably really big right now. You can generally get swatch watches in two basic sizes. Unfortunately, each style by itself seems to only come in a single size, the most common ones being 34mm for ladies' watches and 41mm for the men's. They do also do some other models at 42mm and over, so larger wrists really have a lot of options. If you're a guy with small wrists like me, they do also do a few 38mm ones too. Several of those I think look quite good. However, they're far less common at most retailers and they're hard to track down at affordable prices too, which is a shame. In fact, before researching this video, I wasn't even aware that they even existed. I thought they just did the base 41 and 34 millimeter models respectively, as they're the only ones you ever seem to see online or in store. Both of these ones I've got in front of me have got an advertised 30 meters of water resistance, which actually surprised me given how easily that battery compartment can be removed. Interestingly, I don't know a single person, at least not well, that wears swatch watches. In the time I've been interested in watches, I can't even recall seeing anyone wear one. Maybe that's just my local area, who knows. So where do these fit into the scheme of things in the watch world? On paper, these are among the cheapest Swiss made watches that money can buy. That being said, I see the plastic ones as a bit of a gimmick. I don't think I could wear one regularly myself. The steel ones I think are a fairly good alternative to some of the other fashion watches out there. From personal experience, I think the overall design and the build quality is clearly above the likes of Movement and Daniel Wellington that I've reviewed before, not to mention the resale value on these tends to be higher too. So I think these irony models, provided that you can find one that fits, are pretty good fashion watches. They come in so many colors and styles, you're bound to find one you like. Spec-wise, these are low end, and that's fine as long as you're not spending too much on them. As I alluded to earlier, these are generally pretty cheap on Amazon, the plastic ones hovering about 50 quid. But if you're paying over 60 pounds or so for those plastic ones, or over about 120 pounds for the steel ones, I'd reconsider unless you really like the design in question. There are some great Japanese alternatives out there, both quartz and mechanical. In fact, I've got one on my wrist right now. There are plenty of options around both of those little price points. Bear those in mind when making your purchasing decision. So that's my thoughts on Swatch. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of Swatch? If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.